Uh, this is a video of uh, solving quadratics with complex number solutions. So this first slide is um, the same as slide 14 on the previous activity, but go ahead and go through this warm up here. I of the fifth is going to be I of the fourth <clears throat> times I. We know what I to the fourth is. It's one times I. So I to the fifth is equal to I. Then to find i to the sixth, we're going to use the answer for i to the fifth. i to the sixth is going to be i to the fifth. Uh, <clears throat> times i. I the sixth. So the I I the fifth is I and then times I. So I the sixth is going to equal I squared. Let's use one of those negative one. I the seventh. I the seventh is equal to I to the sixth times I. I the seventh is going to be uh, I the six negative one times I so negative I. And then I to the eighth. I the seventh times I. Divide times I. So the negative of I squared. We know I squared is negative one. The opposite of negative one. I do eighth is positive one. So if we want to summarize the results here. I the first is I, I squared, negative one, I cubed, negative I, I the fourth one, I the fifth is I, so the pattern is not repeating itself, I the sixth is negative one, excuse me, I the seventh is negative I, and I the eighth is one. 
<laughs> so summarizing the results here in this slide, I first is equal to I I squared equal negative one I cubed equal negative I by the fourth is one by the fifth would be I I have a sixth negative one I have a seventh is negative I and I do eighth is one. So you can see the pattern is I negative one negative I one and then repeats itself here again, I, negative one, negative I, one. So if I want to do I to the 102, I'll take the power, divide by four, find the remainder. If the remainder is one, we get I. If the remainder is two, <laughs> the remainder is zero. So the only remainders you can get when divided by four is one, two, three, or zero. So one oh two divided by four. is 25 remainder 2 so i of the 102 is equal to the same as i squared which is negative 1 and then i to the 995 
I'm going to do 995 divided by 4 is 2, 4, 8, remainder 3. So I get negative I. Slide two is just a note side. Complex numbers are written in the form A plus BI, where A and B are real numbers. A is the real number part, and BI is the imaginary number part. We defined I as the square root of negative one. I squared is negative one. Any power of i can be simplified uh, to i, negative 1, negative i, or 1. Uh, we learned how to add, subtract, and multiply complex numbers. Oh, I missed the top part of the slide here. And looking at a graph of quadratic, we can determine the number of real solutions. If the parabola has two x-intercepts, then the corresponding quadratic has two real number solutions. If the parabola has one x-intercept, then the corresponding quadratic has one real repeated number solution. If the parabola has no x-intercepts, then the corresponding quadratic has two complex number solutions. We can also look at the discriminant to determine the number of solutions and type of solutions. If p squared minus 4ac is positive, the quadratic has two real number solutions. If p squared minus 4ac is zero, then the quadratic has one real repeated solution. If p squared minus 4ac is negative, then the quadratic has no real number solutions, two complex number solutions. All right, so today we'll solve quadratics with complex number solutions. Solve the following. Here you want to subtract 9 from both sides. And then take the square root. One I out of the radical. So we get plus or minus three I. Second one, you want to subtract 36 from both sides. Square root of both sides. One eye out of the radical. Square root of 36. Get plus or minus 6i. Number 4, you want to subtract 25 from both sides. Take the square root of both sides.
pull an eye out. And then take the square root of 25. Plus or minus 5i. And then the last one. Back 49 from both sides. Take the square root of both sides. One eye out. So seven eye. Slide four, well, these are similar. The binomial squared plus a perfect square. The first one, you want to pack 36 from both sides. And then take the square root of both sides. Subtract three from both sides. Pull an eye out. And finally, take the square root of 36. I get negative three plus or minus. 6i. Number 6, you want to subtract 25 from both sides. And take the square root of both sides. Track two from both sides. An exical negative two. Plus or minus five I. Number seven, subtract forty nine, take the square root on both sides. Four from both sides. One eye out of the radical. And 
and then finally take the square of 49. So negative four plus or minus seven I for number seven. And slide five, you could use the quadratic formula or complete the square here. Let's use the quadratic formula. So get everything on one side. Because we didn't really teach you how to complete the square if there's a coefficient of x squared. So let's use the quadratic formula here. So a is 8, b is negative 10. equals 7. So the opposite of 10, negative 10 is positive 10. Plus or minus square roots. <laughs> negative 10 squared is 100. And it's 4 times 8 times 7. Divided by 16. So 10 plus or minus 100 minus uh, 32 times 7, 224, I believe. You see what 32 times 7 is here. One hundred minus two twenty four is negative uh, one twenty four. And then one eye out of the radical. And I'm not going to simplify that any further, although I probably could simplify this radical. Just going to leave the answer like that. And then number nine, put all the terms on one side. Um, the 
opposite of B would be 9. And 9 squared is 81 times 4 times 8 times 7. Over 16. Plus or minus eighty one minus two twenty four again. Two twenty four minus eighty one. Is one forty three. Pull an eye out of the radical. Well, oh, there should be a one forty three. And the last one on this slide. This one we could use the square root because there's no x term. So subtract three from both sides. Divide both sides by two. and take the square root. And pull an eye out of the radical. Slide six. Guess one, I could use the square root because there's no x term again. Take the square root on both sides.
And then number 12. Let's see what happens when I get everything on one side. Add through to both sides. And then the quadratic formula. Well, actually, I'm going to complete the square here. So subtract. And the reason why is because this is a one here. So subtract. 66 from both sides. And then do two divided by two equals one. One squared is one. So add one to both sides. And you're adding one to both sides, so negative 68 plus 1 is negative 67. And then factor the left here. Take the square root. subtract one and pull an eye out. It should be plus or minus here. Negative one plus or minus I square root of 67. So 13, number 13 here, I'm going to use the quadratic formula. The opposite of 3 would be negative 3. root of 3 squared would be 9 minus 4 times 3 times 1 divided by 3 times 2 would be 6 Uh, 9 minus 12 is negative 3. So like that can't be simplified anymore anyway so and then this last one 
I'm going to multiply everything together here to get started. So 5x squared plus 5x. And on the other side, x squared minus 3x plus 2x minus 6. So combining like terms on the right here. And then getting all the terms on one side. So add X, oops. Subtract x squared first, so you get 4x squared. Add x to both sides, you get 6x. Add 6 to both sides, plus 6. Now I'll use the quadratic formula. The opposite of 6. B squared would be 36. 4 times, well, times 6. Over 2 times 4, which is 8. Uh, 36 minus um, 16 times 6 would be 96. Out of by 8. Negative six. Three six minus ninety six is sixty, so I square root sixty divided by eight. And that is everything except the exit card. We'll do the exit card next time. We're in class together. <laughs>